Apologies for this somewhat rudimentary display. Welcome to another episode of Blooms for You. Another opportunity for me to say thank you as the names of the people appear on my list and as my blooms are opening, dedicating blooms to you that are supporting my channel that I can see and identify. The rudimentary display here is because Cousin It and Dendrobium Hibiki most of the time are not together. I like to dedicate blooms to everybody that is not mentioned here as well because people will be clicking on this video to see what this is all about. So I use cluster bloomers to my advantage to say thank you to everybody that's not mentioned here today for watching, for clicking on the video and for supporting the channel by commenting, sharing, liking and subscribing. So that is one of the reasons I have Hibiki and Cousin It together right now. The other one is it is not often that they are seen together, although they feature a lot when they are in bloom in my dedication videos but Hibiki is slowly starting to peter out and Cousin It is slowly starting to bloom. So as not to show you some somewhat tired looking bloom saying thank you for everything that you do, I also want to bring in Maxillaria variabilis to show you some new fresh blooms because he is just about to kick start and get into the viewfinder more often than not. So what you see on the screen today, even though her cousin It is not exactly exploding just yet, there's a lot of activity within his foliage, but the blooms that I have in the viewfinder, rudimentary or not, they bloom for everybody that is supporting my channel, not mentioned here today. It is very easy to get on that blooms for you list. Make yourself known in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and I will then promptly put you on the list. And as blooms open up, your name will come up, and then one day I will have an episode and you will be mentioned as well. As orchids go, they do take quite some time. So as an update, I have now passed March of 2022, just to give you a feel as to where we're at. And I go in chronological order, but with one exception, because if you become an orchid ninja, that is what the members are called on my channel, you get the fast pass through the queue. <laughs> and get an immediate mention and a thank you. Orchid Ninjas also have their own orchid here in my collection, and that is Phalaenopsis cornocervi variety Chatella Day. We have two nice blooms left, but these two blooms go to all the Orchid Ninjas for their support on my channel. I so appreciate you. Thank you so much for your vote of confidence. It means the world to me. Know that I do not take you for granted, and it cheers me up every time I see your names pop up with your specific bloom at the end of it. And those of you that have been an Orchid Ninja for the longest time already have the official Orchid Ninja logo right next to your name. So, so grateful for all of you. Thank you. It would be fabulous to add a few more Orchid Ninjas to the gaggle. Check out the join button and then see what perks are available, plus additional perks that I cannot list. YouTube only gives me so much space on a list that I can fill them out but you will discover extra perks as and when you become an Orchid Ninja that are not listed. However, for now, we also want to go ahead and check out whose names came up this time around. We're going to leave Cousin It and Dendrobium Hibiki for a moment. Let them catch up what they've been up to for the entire duration of the growing season, how they have fared, etc, etc. Let's go and check out some blooms and which names have come up. I like big lips, this I can't deny. I also like the itty bitty little tiny ones of Rapiculus Lalia. Those lips are gorgeous as well. It just so happens that <laughs> Chunya, good life number one. Well, that lip is so in your face. How can you not be drawn to it? Even that detail of that mustache kind of thing gives me some kind of Poirot vibes. <laughs> Before I get carried away again, <laughs> let me say thank you to K. Lankar Jaya, Blue Light Studios, and David Warren. My Chunya Good Life number one, she blooms for you to say thank you so, so much. Let me correct myself to say a massive thank you so, so much. Massive to match the size of the lip which spans approximately 10 centimeters. <laughs> and you can see it dwarfs the whole bloom as such. 
and then put all three blooms together, the size of that display combined, and you have yourself a bloom display that is dwarfing an orchid, which in itself is rather quite big. Unfortunately, it turns out that the bloom count kind of crowded one bloom out and that one opened upside down. Even though I didn't move the spike from the source of light, well, it is what it is. If everybody is puckering their lips like this all in a confined space, it can get a little bit crowded. But still, three blooms, that is a first for me on this orchid. And having had a few things happen during the season of 2022, I am not going to be picky about an upside down bloom. <laughs> At least it doesn't look weird in a sense that there's something wrong with the orchid. It's just, you know, that's the way it opens. So, Kaylan Karjaya, Blue Light Studios, David Warren, please do not be offended by an upside down bloom. There is still so much perfection in all of this. And it's pretty much the right color in the viewfinder. We can kind of think a little bit more on a deeper yellow side, not bright yellow, but a deeper hue heading towards maybe a tinge of orange, but not much. The colors are pretty much well represented in the petals and sepals. The lip, however, is a deeper, a richer red. Depending on how the light falls on it, well, I find that cameras find it difficult to capture reds and purple blues. I don't know. Maybe it's just mine. But still, if you stay far away from it, it is gorgeous. But if you like the smell of a plastic bag, then you will enjoy the fragrance of this orchid because that is what she smells like. And I'm not talking about a perfumed trash bag. I'm talking about a regular shopping bag that is new. When you open up the plastic, you have that fragrance coming out. That is what this orchid smells like, which kind of matches the texture of the blooms as well because that texture is very sturdy. It is not waxy. It doesn't feel thin at all. The blooms really have a substance to them. The bloom duration is about three and a half, four weeks, which is also amazing based on the fact that this orchid has to support this show and can do so for such a long period of time. If you're interested, a little history on as to why I bought a Chunya Good Life number one. Well, I am very partial to whites, blues, pinks, hot pinks, vintage colored pinks, anything along the line of blue, purple, that is my jam. And my daughter back in the day when I was building this collection said you don't have any yellows, you don't have any orange, I don't see any red. So yeah, I agreed with her took her perspective on board and went on the hunt for some yellow and oranges and let's see if we can fit some red in there. And I stumbled across this bloom as you do with pictures, but it was the name that attracted me more. It was the fact that it was called Good Life, number one. And having had so many setbacks and so many curveballs thrown at me in my life, it was around that time period in my life I was questioning whether life was good at all. That name caught my attention and I thought I can't just put everything into one big boo-hoo, life is awful, I hate it, conclusion, judgment, whatever you want to call it. I had to make a conscious effort that my life hadn't been all boo-hoo, bad and horrible for some reason at that time. I was focusing on the boohoo and the horrible. The name Good Life is a reminder to myself that life hasn't always been that bad. And on top of that, it reminds me of the best time of my life when I was with my children at Universal and at Disney for three full weeks during Christmas and New Year's. And the only thing that was not permitted during that vacation was the word no. That was the only rule. Everything else was a go. And we had the best times of our lives. So good life combined with the number one good life experience. That is the purpose why I bought this orchid. I am glad she's doing well, even though scale seems to like her. We deal with that very, very quickly. But still to have her doing well, that also makes me feel that life in the orchid hobby isn't that bad after all. So. Thank you for listening to my little history on this orchid, but thank you to Kaylan Karjaya, Blue Light Studios, and David Warren for your support on my channel. It is my utmost pleasure 
to present you and give you and dedicate the blooms of my Chunya Good Life number one for all that you do for my channel. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope that wherever you are in the world, that your life is good too. It gives me great pleasure to say thank you to Zula, Carrie Shannon, Brandy Maya, Anita Brown, Charles Jones, Donna Sherwood, Tatiana Skripka, and Eric Chandra for your support on my channel. Massive thank you to all of you. And this is my Dendrobium serratilabium in my collection. I lovingly call it Sharky because, yeah, the obvious is right there. To see the lip is serrated. That is why serratilabium and it looks like shark's teeth. <laughs> Sometimes orchid names can be a little bit of a mouthful. For that reason, Sharky just slides off the tongue quite easily. I dedicate this blooming to you. Even though it is quite late in the season, this orchid normally blooms a little bit earlier around early September. But hey, we've had a weird year. Clearly it wasn't warm enough for it. And here we are. Still, the blooms aren't very long lasting. Unfortunately, I have to hustle to get them documented and filmed and make sure that my dedication is on point. Because while some buds may still need to open fully, other blooms are already showing signs of aging. So it's kind of a game of will the wind please stop? Can I get the right light? <laughs> and of course, the time to be able to do this. Having cancelled everything on my schedule to make sure that I meet all the other requirements for this dedication, I am really pleased to see what I'm seeing in the viewfinder. Love me a little bit of afternoon sun on what could be a pale yellow bloom with some brownish markings and stripes, but the sun enhances it all and lifts it up and makes it look a little bit more yellow and richer in color. This orchid is not fragrant. I wouldn't want to be sticking my nose into a shark's mouth anyway, but if she were fragrant, it would be interesting to know what could that aroma be? Hopefully not shark's breath, but she is not fragrant. And it is a bit of a shame that back in the day when I received very teeny tiny canes, that I had a huge chunk of baked cork <laughs> bark and thought, you know, it's a great idea to put three of these funky looking canes on one piece of bark. So yeah, um, fast forward several years and here we are. We have ourselves a community mount of three orchids that are doing exceptionally well. <laughs> the big bully, the most vigorous of them all is my Dendrobium of Philum. Now, I could take off the other two and give a Philum free reign. I just don't have the courage to... It would mean cutting orchid roots, finding the right timing with root growth, finding another piece of nice cork bark because these would not go on my inorganic mounts, but a piece of bark of the similar quality and strength of the one I currently have these on. So yeah, clearly I'm just making excuses. <laughs> the first reason being the main one, I just don't have the courage. So for the time being, this is what we've got because behind it, you can see the crest of the blooms of my Dendrobium soraula. And I'm telling you, I had some really pathetic looking canes when these three arrived. Meanwhile, I only thought I was mounting two orchids because the soraula was the order and the stowaway is Sharky. Sharky came because I guess the seller thought the canes looked the same. They were dormant and said, oh, that's all a soraula and threw it all into my box. <laughs> And then Sharky bloomed and I'm like, um, hello, who are you? <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> that is how I came to own Sharky. And I would say it's kind of a match made in heaven. I, I have really, really enjoyed these blooms and watched the orchid grow and get stronger and stronger. This is the biggest bloom cluster I've had in many, many years. So it really pleases me and I'm proud of myself that I can say thank you to Zula, Carrie Shannon, Brandy Maya, Anita Brown, Charles Jones, Donna Sherwood, Tatiana Skripka, and Eric Chandra using my Sharky Blooms to say thank you to you for your support on my channel. And now you can see that the sun has left 
we are left with somewhat of a pale orange hue. It's still very, very pretty, but I do like the little bit of sun. It does enhance the blooms just a little bit more. I suppose the universe is telling me that this clip is long enough by taking the sun away from me. Uh, oh well. <laughs> I will just say thank you to all of you for your support on my channel. It is so much appreciated. And I hope you're all doing well in your part of the world. Sha'anan will buy. That is the translation of a Hebrew name that I saw that had subscribed to my channel. So I hope I got it right. Shah Anan will buy. Chub Joe, Ruchi Patel, Denise Artesa, Fatima Christina, Kampung Halaman Babak E, Purpleless Porpoise. This is my Orangus Mr. City Eye. At the time of filming this clip, we are at the end of October, so I don't know when it's going to air, but it is about six weeks ahead of time blooming in my collection. Normally, I get the blooms around November and then they fade into December. But hey, 2022, it's just been one of those weird years. And as long as the orchid blooms, as long as the orchid is doing well, which she is, here we are with two spikes. Now, in the right climate, I believe this orchid would bloom twice a year because it doesn't seem to care what time of year it is. It just blooms when the crown has developed two or three more leaves. So it's just such a shame that I am here in southern Spain where I am climate dependent. Otherwise, I would probably have this orchid in bloom in January and then again in November almost one year i think the second year i owned this orchid i was just about to get her to bloom twice a year depending it was all within the same year but i just kind of scraped out of that she actually bloomed out in january and then bloomed again for me in november of the same year and i want to say thank you to sha anan will buy chub joe ruchi patel denise artesa fatima christina Kampung Halaman Babak E, Purpleless Porpoise, for your support on my channel before she blooms out. While I don't have a lot of wind going <laughs> and a little bit of diffused sunlight to enhance her blooms a little bit because they are difficult to film. On top of that, I have her in Lekka and self-watering and her container is white. <laughs> yes, I know. I should probably have a studio where I can paint a wall complete pitch black so that I can film an orchid like this. But you see the dark patch behind the right spike? <laughs> yeah, that was on purpose. <laughs> I try. <laughs> now, as I mentioned, my orchid is in Lekka and self-watering. Not a very conventional setup for an Orangus, but it is working really well, even though you may see that the leaves look a little bit meh. Well, I had a little bit of a mealybug problem, which fused one of the new leaves as it was growing together. But, you know, we got rid of that and the mealybugs didn't return. They are not welcome in my collection. And then this orchid was living very close to where thrips were active, which obviously posed a massive threat. But I managed to see the thrips on the other orchids that were affected, and I managed to treat this one before any thrips got to it. The reason I haven't wiped the leaves down is because it has insecticidal soap on it, hoping that the beauty of the blooms would distract from the somewhat weird looking leaves. <laughs> I am pleased to say, though, that the Lekka and self-watering setup has worked beautifully. I was hoping that one day she would actually lean over and grow pendently, but oh well, she is growing upright. But let me tell you about the evenings when I'm working at my desk. Her fragrance is just magical. She has a very exotic fragrance to my nose. There is jasmine in it, but it is a very soapy jasmine. I wouldn't exactly call it sweet. It's almost like lighting incense where the aroma is wonderful the further you are away from the source of the incense. And then imagine you actually really like that smell. So you get closer and closer and closer to the incense and then it gets a little bit more spicy and a little bit unpleasant on the nose. So distance is key when appreciating this fragrance. It is jasmine. The closer you get, it gets really soapy. And of course, I'm not sitting at my desk during the day, so I appreciate knowing she's in bloom behind me because <laughs> she is fragrant at night. Just delicious. 
From the time I saw her spikes growing to the time she bloomed out, it took eight weeks. So you can imagine I raised a few eyebrows when I saw spikes growing in August. And I was like, okay, here we go. <laughs> if what I tell you about the weird 2022 weather conditions on my patio and in the grow space, and you question whether that is really true or I'm just being fussy, well, my orchid collection is proof in the pudding that what I say is actually true. The weirdest things have happened this season. Meanwhile, it kept it very interesting. But you see, I babble. Again, what else is new? This dedication, these blooms of my Rangus Mr. City, I go to once again, Sha Anan will buy, Chub Joe, Ruchi Patel, Denise Artesa, Fatima Cristina, Kampung Halaman Babak E, and purpleless porpoise. To all of you, thank you so very much for your support on my channel. I see you, I appreciate you. It means the world to me that you are here. Thank you. This is Catlia Dinard Blue Heaven. <laughs> uh, what do you think? <laughs> Should I even elaborate? I am not entirely sure, but maybe not so much on the visual. We'll let the images speak for themselves. But I think it would be a good idea to elaborate on the fragrance for anybody who is not familiar with this orchid. But first, three blooms for the first time on my Catlia Dinard Blue Heaven. And as a massive thank you to the Tropical Struggle, Takahiro Kasahara, and Tatiana Nusu, I dedicate my Catlia Dinard Blue Heaven blooms to you. For your support on my channel, it's a massive thank you on my part. Takahiro Kasahara, I have translated. So I hope that whoever that person is, thank you. I hope I pronounced it correctly. But I would not have been able to read your handle without going to translate that. So, the tropical struggle, Takahiro Kasahara, and Tatiana Nusu. Once again, my gorgeous Katliana Dinar Blue Heaven, she blooms for you. And I hope that you are into big floofy Catlia flowers. That smell, oh my goodness. This one, I mean, Catlia blooms normally have a nice fragrance, except the ones that smell a bit plasticky. But this one, oh my goodness. If in doubt, if unsure, the closest, most accurate description I can give you about this one is if you were to think of yourself in a rose garden. It is a warm day. You close your eyes while you're in the rose garden. Not right now, because hello, Catlia Dinard. <laughs> but while you're in the rose garden, you can close your eyes and the breeze will carry all the fragrances of all those roses in the warm summer breeze. That is what she smells like to me. As the clip progresses, you will also maybe notice that we're in between a little bit overcast and then a little bit more sun, which is wonderful because we get to appreciate the baby pink watercolor lavender kind of mixed of her petals and sepals. This was coincidence. I couldn't have planned filming this on a better day, despite the fact that I've got a breeze going, but you can see how she moves, how her color changes depending on the light influence. When I saw that the gorgeous sheath of my Dinard was starting to get chubby and fill up, I was all excited. So I was on bud watch on the daily every time I raised my curtain on the east side. That enormous lip has nowhere to go even though the buds are still closed. It starts to spill out of the closed buds. It's just incredible. It just heightens the entire anticipation of these blooms eventually opening up. Another thing that happens with these buds is they also sparkle. You don't need petals and sepals to see any kind of pixie dust. These buds already show you what is coming up next once the blooms open. They, in their own right, sparkle. Oh, <laughs> gushing, gushing. Yes, I'm gushing. But I'm so happy because of what I have been dealing with weather-wise early spring and then there are certain orchids that are highlight orchids and you just don't know if you're gonna miss out on the blooming in that season but no that's why I'm doing cartwheels around the patio and on top of it I got three blooms once again thank you the tropical struggle Takahiro Kasahara and Tatiana Nusu I'm anticipating another two weeks out of these blooms but based on my wind conditions 
There's a lip that is already showing a little bit of, you know, mechanical damage because it's right up against that leaf. So the perfection is a little bit short-lived because of my conditions. But she can be in bloom easily four weeks. And I've had the pleasure of experiencing that in the past years when conditions were a little bit more favorable. My blooming alley is just lit with her fragrance. <laughs> it's like walking into a bubble of yum. And even though I like all Cattleya blooms, this is something that I love about this orchid is that her petals have a very distinct shape. They remind me of little piglet ears, you know, like the movie Babe. They, they're not like elongated and out. They have this gorgeous oval shape. And then I am about symmetry. I look for symmetry. I mean, sometimes we get wacky blooms and then, you know, the structure, color and shape and everything appeals to us. So it's not to say that a bloom that is a little bit odd isn't attractive. But my eye is so drawn to symmetry and the triangle shape of the sepals, the exactness of it. And then coming out of that is this massive, massive lip. This bloom, amongst others with a similar kind of structure, they, they easily fall into, I love you, you're perfect. <laughs> Even though she has a tissue-like appearance on her petals and sepals, she doesn't feel tissue-y, she doesn't feel weak. The blooms are sturdy and still look super graceful. The lip is a statement. If this were a delicious elderflower and lavender sorbet, the icing on the top of that sorbet is the lip. You just cannot, obviously, ignore the lip. And I'm so happy that at this point in time, I don't have sun because now you can see how it glows. That is just insane. But for now, she ranks number one for the tropical struggle, Takahiro Kasahara and Tatiana Nusu. Because you are on the list, your names came up, your support on my channel is appreciated. Thank you so very, very much for all that you do. This gorgeous Cattleya Dinard Blue Heaven, she blooms for you. Okay, well, I'm feeling a little bit ignored. So, hello, Cousin It. We are over here. Do you think maybe you could say hi and look at us? Because these two seem to be deep in conversation here. I think Cousin It has forgotten his manners. I'll be right back. We got to fix this. I need to have a chat with him. That's a bit better, don't you think? <laughs> it's just a little bit rude not to be looking into the viewfinder. I know, I know. I don't either. I know, but my orchids always should look into the viewfinder because it is about them and not me. Anyway, I have to be super vigilant now with Cousin It because aphids would like to have a go at those blooms. So we shall be very, very observant as to who wants to start to colonize and make sure that nothing untoward happens to him. I love to see those pops of yellow and I would love it too if you stuck around on this channel and watch how he starts to bit by bit by bit become more yellow. <laughs> it's gonna be quite the show if his caretaker doesn't make a mistake. <laughs> Thank you so very, very much for watching. If you stayed all the way to the end, I hope that you enjoyed the blooms. From Cousin It, Dendrobium Hibiki, and myself, and well, <laughs> look at what has been at my feet throughout this filming process. So, from Cousin It, Dendrobium Hibiki, King, and myself, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your support. Please like the video, subscribe if you haven't yet, let me know that you have subscribed so that I can welcome you to the best of my ability, put you on the list and all that fun stuff that happens at Ninja Orchids and on the patio. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.